welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation as usual as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. What you think about everyone. I'm Lori LeBay and welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm thrilled that you're here with us today. We are going to be talking about preserving dignity when incontinence hits. But before I go there, I always have to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, first, I want to say thank you to the Mark Arneson Band who allows us to play Clarion Call as our opening music. I just love that song. And for those of you that are new, Alzheimer Speaks is about sound information, not just sound bites. We like to have real conversations with real people. So maybe, just maybe, you can be our next guest. We don't care where you are in the world or what position you have. What are your thoughts and feelings about dementia? What are you doing about it? What are the needs? Let us know. Reach out to me at radio at alzheimerspeaks.com. And if you haven't checked out Dementia Map, please do that. We have 150 different categories to choose from. There's a blog, there's a glossary of terms, there's a calendar of events, all kinds of cool things. And speaking of calendar of events, you can go to a free virtual event sponsored by Artist Senior Living. And that is going to be Wednesday. April 20th from 5.30 to 6.30 Central. So that'd be 6.30, 7.30 Eastern time called As the Cookie Crumbles. And I'll be presenting that. I'll be sharing my 30 years experience, some of the tips and tricks that I learned caring for my own mother uh, who lived with dementia. And then on May 12th, there's going to be a dementia summit. And that will be both virtual and in person in St. Cloud, Minnesota. That is being held by the Central Minnesota Dementia Community Action Network, known as DCAN. And Dr. Dale Brennison is going to be their keynote speaker there. So that's going to be a fantastic uh, session. And, and you know, I'm big on support groups. So I'm still so thankful for Arthur Senior Care, who continues to sponsor our Memory Cafe, which we hold twice a month from one to two o'clock central time. And that is virtual. Anybody can participate anywhere around the world on that. And then also, I do an in-person support group for both the care partners and there's respite for their loved ones, which is sponsored by Brookdale North Oaks in Minnesota. And that is on the last Wednesday of each month from 10 to 11. And if we can't get together in person, then we meet virtually. Also, um, if you haven't, time is a ticking. Get your applications in for Mods Awards. There you can win five to $25,000 for the work you've already done that is improving people's lives living with dementia. Last, I just want to let you know we're going to be hearing from the Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner, and they're going to tell us a little bit more about the Foot Bar Walker. And then when we come back, you're going to meet our guests and we are going to be off and running. And I know you can't imagine that incontinence as a topic can be uplifting, but I promise you that's exactly what this is going to be all about giving hope. So hang on and we'll be right back. I love the foot bar walker and let me tell you why. It is the option for my toolbox that I've been waiting for. Let's be honest, there are some clients who, despite our best rehab efforts, just aren't able to return to performing a sit-to-stand transfer on their own. Now I can offer my caregivers an easier, safer option that doesn't involve hoisting their loved one up from a sitting position. I don't recommend this walker for all of my clients, but I do recommend this walker for those caregivers looking for an easier, safer option with transfers. I would also encourage other therapists to add this walker to their toolbox. It's kind of like having my own mobile parallel bars for the client to pull up on. Whether it's a family caregiver at home helping a loved one with Parkinson's or dementia, CNAs in a long-term care facility assisting their patients, or therapists adapting to client and caregiver specific needs, we now have a very safe and effective option to offer 
in the Foot Bar Walker. Check this product out at thefootbarwalker.com. That's it for today from Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner. Have a great day and don't forget, if you can't do it, adapt it. Well, we are back and we are going to have a really exciting conversation, like I said, about continence care program that is really changing lives. So I'm going to introduce you to all of these women and then we will start our conversation. So this is actually the four of a four part series that Senny has sponsored, which is just absolutely fabulous. We have Deanna Vigliotti with us, who is their national sales manager for Senny, and she She's just kind of crazed about getting this product out and changing lives. And their product is known to be a premier adult incontinence product. And Deanna has over 30 years experience and background in healthcare sales. And she joined Senny back in 2019, whose parent company is TZMO. And their whole goal was to expand their presence in the U.S. And let me tell you, they are doing just that. I can't wait to talk more about their new continence products. So Deanna is with us. And then also her associate, Lori Gridline, is with us. And she's been working in healthcare and senior living for over 15 years herself. And she is an account executive for Sunny in the Northeast region of New Jersey. Also joining us are three women from Senior Helpers. And so Marissa Becerna is a nurse who has worked in home care and hospice for more than 25 years. And she's actually the newest amongst the group here. And she oversees three Senior Helpers locations in New Jersey. Her mother also lives with Alzheimer's. And so she is really committed to dignity and aging. And then we have Linda Panarella, and she has over 15 years experience managing personalized care for seniors. She's a certified dementia practitioner, and she is also a PAC certified independent trainer. She's the director of business development for senior helpers and Town Square Adult Day Enrichment Centers. She serves as a consultant for the development and construction of the first Town Square in New Jersey. And then wrapping us up here, we have Robin Roundtree, and she is the marketing manager for Senior Helpers in Orlando. When Robin's mother was diagnosed with Lewy body, she decided she better learn all about caregiving and getting assistance and building a care team, even if some of those lessons came at her own expense, which most of us who have cared for a loved one know exactly what she's talking about there. The care her mother received actually from senior helpers was a game changer for her, and it made a huge impact on her quality of life as well as her mom's. After her mom passed away, Robin chose to leave her broadcasting career and to help family members on the caregiving journey by working for senior helpers herself. Robin actually hosts a podcast called Informed Aging, and she is also an advisory team member of the Central Florida Lewy Body Group. Well, ladies, I am so thrilled to have you with us today. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy, busy schedules. I always start out by asking our guests if they've been personally touched by dementia. So I'm just going to go around one by one and have you answer that. It just gives our audience a little bit of background. So Deanna, if you don't mind starting. Yes. Thanks, Lori, for having us here today. Uh, I have been touched by it. My um, aunt on my uh, father's side had Alzheimer's disease and unfortunately passed from the disease. Okay. Thank you very much. And Lori, how about you? Have you been touched in your family, your circle of friends? Yes, I have, Lori, unfortunately. My grandmother had Alzheimer's, and as um, the progression started to go downward, she had to move in with my father, and they became the caretakers for her for about six years before she passed. Okay, thank you. And Marissa, how about you? Hi, Lori. Yes, thanks for having us today. Um, my mom, my mom has Alzheimer's and my dad is her primary caregiver as well as me and my sister. Um, and obviously in my professional career, I've come across it in all levels of nursing and home care. Okay, wonderful. And Linda? Yes, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. Um, yes, my life was touched uh, with my mother. Um, being diagnosed at what we would now call early stage, uh, early onset rather. She was probably in her 50s when symptoms started to show. We just didn't recognize them 
for what they were and diagnosed by the time she was 63 and passed very young, not much older than I am right now. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. And Robin, how about you? Yes, my mother had Lewy body dementia um, and I was in charge of her care for six years. She passed in 2017 in her 70s. So she left us a little too young. Wow. Talk about being touched in our group. Pretty significant. Uh, and I'm finding more and more people are, are realizing they've been touched where many years ago they weren't diagnosed or it wasn't really discussed and, and things. So this is an issue that, that touches so many families. So thank you ladies for sharing. Um, Deanna, I'm going to, I'm going to start out with you. You know, this is our fourth series here and I have learned something in all of the other series and Every time I get done with one of these series, I get really excited because the people that you've pulled together for these series are so passionate about dignified aging and preserving independence. And it's always such a hopeful conversation. So first I have to say thank you and Lori and and Senny for doing this because it's a game changer out there to be able to get a comfortable conversation started. So why don't you tell us a a little bit in terms of who we've had and how Senior Helpers is a little bit different? Because every conversation has been a little little twisted, a little different. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to uh, answer that question for sure. So we, uh, you know, pre-pandemic, right around when the pandemic started, we started reaching out to home care companies as more and more articles came out about people wanting to live longer in their homes. And so our SENI team and my colleagues, we um, thought about, hmm, a continence care program uh, may be the way to go. And we started talking with different home care agencies at the local level to see if our program would have a good fit. And what I mean by the program would be home care agencies offering SENI products via free SENI product samples and education about the products and measuring tools and all things that make it easy for one of their clients to utilize the products and actually get the products via the home care agency. So uh, local feedback and then right on up at the national level with um, several home care companies we started talking and these, the program evolved and the interest evolved. And so with senior helpers, it's a little bit unique in that we have been vetted by their uh, corporate folks. Their clinical team took a look at our products. We had um, many discussions uh, probably back since last summer, but in around November timeframe is when we formalized a, a program with them. And what that means basically is corporate senior helpers supports the program. And it allows my colleagues and I to knock on the doors of the local um, agencies to say, hey, you know, have you heard of SENI? Can we tell you about SENI? Here's what we're thinking. How does this fit in with your agency? And it allows us to really get a pulse on the different markets throughout the country and how local agencies can differ a little bit. So it's um, it's a great relationship. It takes time to knock on all those doors. I think Senior Helpers has over 300 locations across the country nationwide. So our team is um, knocking on those doors and having conversations and um, baby steps all the way. but. Uh, What's wonderful is even some of the folks you'll learn on this program today have been referring SENI products in a more informal capacity for a couple of years now with great, great outcomes. So those doors are very easy to say, hey, now we have a formal program and your corporate has vetted us. So we're very excited to be working with this um, group across the board. Um, we have found, I think my, Lori will agree and, and my teammates will agree with me, We um, people are passionate, people are committed. Um, we're not so siloed as an industry. We're really full circle of what's in the best interest for seniors that we service together. And I know my belief is we are better together when we are aligned with solutions that make that make sense. So um, yeah, it's a new new relationship, exciting relationship. And I think we're on the road to helping a lot of people within uh, the senior helpers organization and the seniors that they service. 
Well, and I like even the name of the program. It's the continence program. It's not the incontinence program. And I know when I talk, I still use incontinence kind of as a transition because people don't see it as a problem. And it's like, yeah, because we're going to fix that you know, for you. Um, but it just that in and of itself, you know, has just such a, a positive light and, and spin on it too. So thank you. Um, Robin, why don't you tell us a little bit about senior helpers? Cause there, there might be people in our audience that don't really know what is it you guys do? Okay, well, we do in-home care or in-facility care. So we're doing those things just to make life a little bit easier, um, helping out with the shower, preparing meals. It just depends on the person, but it's you know non-medical care in the home. So that can be a few hours a week all the way up to 24 seven, but we do specialize in Alzheimer's and dementia care. So all of our caregivers are trained in dementia. And then about you, is there anything else you want to add in terms of your your background that maybe I didn't cover in the intro? Yeah, actually, um, Senior Helpers is the company that I decided to use while I was caring for my mom. Um, And this is before I was in this industry at all. So after she passed, I looked back at the whole experience and said, okay, who did I really learn from? And it was senior helpers. They were always a phone call away to just answer a question. So I thought, well, you know, I've spent six years learning how to be a caregiver. Um, It's it's time to use my master's degree, as my brother called it, and, uh, and help other people because I did it kind of, you know, at a younger age, my peers aren't quite going through this yet. So um, I shared a lot of the journey on, on Facebook. So now people know to reach out to me. And now I quit my other career and came to work to Senior Helpers four years ago. Wow. Well, talk about uh, really believing and, and yeah. you know, being transitioned through that proof of, of compassionate care and understanding. And kudos yeah. to you for taking what you've learned and bringing it back and playing it forward. So um, thank you for that. Um, Robin, I also wanted to ask you, because I I know uh, Deanna had mentioned you guys have been using some Cine products already and you're referring clients to to buy uh, the products for a couple of years now. But, you know, before the Care Continence program, you know, arrived, I'm wondering if you can share some of the details in terms of, you know, what were you hearing in the homes? What were you seeing in the homes regarding urinary incontinence. Right. It's a, it's a big problem. And I was excited because Deanna had given me the solution, you know? So, you know, I started off with just, you know, if they mentioned it was a problem, here's some samples. And then I would hear, oh my gosh, this is incredible. Uh, My aunt had a stroke. And so of course I made sure she had some samples. My cousin said, well, I used every other brand that's out there and Sunny's the best. So you hear comments like that coming from your own family. You're like, okay, okay. And it was just, everybody was so thrilled that there was something better. You know, just uh, last week we had a family and they're like, every morning we have to do the laundry because the bed is wet. And I said, okay, I'm going to give you, you know, the sunny, try this out. I think it's going to help. And we gave them two samples and they had two nights, you know, without two mornings with having to do the laundry. And it just, you don't think about what a big deal it is until you get it fixed. And then you're like, okay, I actually have, I'm not doing laundry for an hour and a half today. So it's really been an incredible uh, response from everybody who's tried it. So it's really a a brand I believe in. It's interesting when you talked about laundry, because this hasn't come up. I mean, doing laundry and and the whole starting your morning off with that, you know, uh, isn't, isn't what everyone, you know, wants their day to kick off with. But one thing that we never talked about, which might be a really interesting concept, um, is to um, for Sunny to look at the cost savings of water and electric and detergent. We've talked about how, you know, it brings dignity back and that peaceful atmosphere and everyone's a little more relaxed. And it's like, oh, my gosh, we can actually get this done now. But in terms of that, there's there's that, you know, other savings that I think sometimes we just forget about. And uh, maybe that's just top of mind because I just got my water bill you know, <laughs> on there. But, um, you know, I, I, one of the things I've loved about this discussion is it's just, it's so big. I mean, the benefits are just, 
they're so massive on so many different levels. And I think that that's really cool. So thanks for, thanks for sharing that, Robin. Lori, can you kind of speak to your relationship that you've had with, with Linda and Marissa? And they're in New Jersey where, where Robin is in Orlando and they are kind of the, the newest in, in your relationships there. So. Yes, absolutely. So I met one of their colleagues and uh, at a networking event and uh, a few people had brought me over to be introduced to, to their colleague. And as soon as we started talking, um, I, you know, she said to me, you need to meet Linda. She, uh, she runs the town square. And uh, I said, you know, it's funny. I've never even walked in one of your town squares. I would love to meet Linda and her team and uh, learn more and also talk about Seni and how we can provide uh, their members with some free samples if they're, you know, having issues and things like that. So we set up the appointment and I got to meet Linda and Marissa for the first time. Um, we sat down, uh, we went over some, some of the Seni uh, benefits. We, we did a demo, I did a demonstration for them. Um, they loved the products. We had a gentleman, a sweet, sweet man, walk in and uh, chat with us for a few minutes. Um, <laughs> just a sweetheart of a man and uh, just made himself very comfortable. So uh, so we stopped our our meeting and, and talked to him for a few minutes and, you know, uh, walking around and getting the tour of, of Town Square. That is just an amazing, amazing place in Richmond Center. Um, Linda just told me some wonderful stories about some of their members who, you know, didn't exactly want to come in and spend their day at Town Square. And um, after they had done it for the first time, the family members were calling Linda almost in tears because their loved ones had had such an enjoyable day. So it just, you know, it means a lot to them for, for that to be a success. And uh, they are partnered up with Senior Helpers in some ways. Um, some of the owners own a uh, agency, a senior helpers agency, and then they also have that opportunity to own Town Square or more. Wonderful. Well, I'm, I'm excited for Linda to be here because I've always wanted Town Square on the radio and I, I didn't think I'd get you in this way, but, but I'll take it. And so I can't wait to get to you, but I'm going to go to Marissa first, um, if you don't mind. And Marissa, if you can tell us a little bit about your agency and, and you know, you're newer to the senior helper clan per se. And, you know, what, what was your reaction to, to see Lori's demonstration and kind of approach to, to Cotton's Care? Sure, sure. So my agency, the where I met Lori is in Brick, New Jersey, but I have more than one um, location. I have one in Brick, I have one in Cherry Hill, and soon to open one in Linwood. Um, so I was, you know, dealing with incontinence care in my nursing career for the past 25 years in home care hospice. Um, it's just a constant um, challenge for families. You know, this is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. They can deal with dementia and Alzheimer's until this comes in. And then that's when they really start to look and reach out for help. And a product, it's funny because my father called me Sunday night. Sunday is his days alone with my mom. He has help Monday through Saturday. And of course, he called me Sunday morning, actually. And he said, can you order me some more of those, you know, protective pads for the bed? Had to change the pad, the bed again this morning. And I immediately thought, wait till I get you this product. Wait till I, you know, I just want them to be my testimony. You know, I mean, I saw the um, demonstration with Lori. Um, you know, I was really impressed with what I saw, but I want to see it in real life and see it on my own mom. And if I could save my dad that Sunday morning linen change, it would be wonderful. So when you're adding up your costs of laundry detergent and water, add the cost of those disposable chucks pads for the bed as well. That's yeah. a good point. And then you know, oh, well, like Robin saw it in her family, you know, firsthand experience and cousins in the whole nine yards. I mean, that that's really cool when you're when the work you do makes such a big difference. And and family doesn't always like to admit that other family members have like, this was a good decision, you know, right. depending right. on dynamics and right. stuff right. within a family. So 
to, you know, to get that and to see that and to have it be your own loved ones. Uh, that's, that's wonderful. I think it means, you know, so much more when you can give a very personal testimony to the product, you know, when you're talking about it with customers. Oh, absolutely. Clients, absolutely. Patients. If there's one thing I vowed, you know, and I said this the other day on the call, you know, to my mom is that I will protect her dignity at all costs. So if there's a product that will do that and help my family, help my father as well and protect my mom's dignity, I'm willing to try it and, and be the first one to recommend it. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, Linda, I wanted to talk with you, you know, I understand that you were uh, an owner of Senior Helpers and that you and Marissa also, you know, work together at Town Square, your adult enrichment center. I'm wondering if you can, can give us a little bit of detail. First, to tell people a little bit about Town Square, that might be helpful in and of itself. And then, you know, the background in terms of how it, how it came to be and, and how a senior helpers fits in and then pulling Senny in as well. It's kind of a layered process there. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Happy to do that. I do want to, I do want to state, I am not an owner at senior helpers. Okay. Um, I formerly a director of operations with senior okay. helpers, but then transitioned into town square okay. as business development director and helped to develop the, the first site that our owner opened in brick, New Jersey called town square at the Jersey shore. Um, it's an incredible concept and a whole new option for seniors that is so exciting um, because we all know that the price of care is going up and up and up. Um, it's harder and harder for families to be affording one-on-one -on -one care when they need to have care for a full day. Uh, for instance, a daughter who may be caring for her mom at home but needs to go to work typically is not able to afford a one-on-one -on -one caregiver in the home um, for eight hours a day, five days a week. And that's where Town Square comes in as a really wonderful second option because we can take care of needs, uh, provide support, provide some supervision, but more importantly, provide absolute engagement and enrichment and joining them into a community. And that's what we found. What's so different about Town Square and exciting is that it's a whole new concept in daycare. Adult daycare has served its purpose well for decades. Um, it truly has to not take anything away from it, um, but that's the point. It has been decades and there hasn't been a change. And this is, this is revolutionary. We're built like a town in the 50s, the 1950s, 1960s. And we have a huge space that allows us to not have only an open park area, where every town square has a vintage car parked. Ours has a 1955 Oldsmobile parked right inside. And all around that park area then are 13 different storefronts, we call them themed activity rooms, where members can go to engage in a variety of activities. So we have a health club, a music room. We have a theater that seats 40. We serve breakfast, lunch, and a snack in the afternoon in Rosie's Diner, which is a retro 50s diner with a jukebox playing inside. We have a salon where ladies can have their hair done. We have a city hall and a learning center where they can take virtual trips or take a class if they wish to. Uh, you know, it breaks all the myths about aging and the idea that people as they age really don't want to learn new things or try new things. We're not only engaging folks in past pursuits, but we're challenging the, to them to try new things and finding that they love it. And um, the story with Lori was absolutely correct that, you know, we do meet a lot of resistance from people who could be potential members because any idea of needing support or any idea of needing care just signals, I'm losing my independence and that makes everybody uncomfortable. But what we find is that um, with a visitor too, they are one right over and they're coming in happy every day. Our transportation company tells us that they have a party on the way to us every day when, before they get out of their vans. And we love that story. So um, Town Square came out of a partnership with Senior Helpers. That's what the connection is. Um, so our owner happens to have multiple locations in New Jersey with Senior Helpers and in Pennsylvania as well. But also we have just opened our second town square in Princeton, New Jersey. 
with a fourth to come very soon. We already have a lease in Marlton, New Jersey, and we're looking for a site in Monmouth County, New Jersey. So hopefully by this time next year, we are going to be really making a huge difference in the lives of seniors all across central New Jersey. Well, I love it. You know, one of the things that you you mentioned was really subtle and our audience may or may not have picked it up, but you talked about members versus clients, you know, allowing them to join and be a part of the community. And all of what you talked about was about quality of care, comfort, dignity, getting in their space that they're comfortable, they're familiar with. I mean, that's, that's absolutely ideal. And I can't wait for more of them to pop up because I think we all hear over and over. I'm not a kid. I don't need a babysitter. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go to adult day, you know, and sometimes those names, we just have to change in the concepts of what they look like and what they have to offer. um, When you, when you're really focusing on abilities and engagement and, and fun, you know, when you can, when you can have a fun time just on the, on the bus, getting to where you want to go. I mean, that says, that says a lot in and of itself, but I'm sure even with your members, you have issues with incontinence and how does that impact their ability to participate in the community itself? Well, it's absolutely a concern for anybody that wants to protect their dignity, wants to make sure that they're um, not going to have an accident that anybody's going to notice. We don't have a lot of members that are dealing with incontinence, but when Lori did the presentation, there were several situations that came immediately to mind. One was with the support group that we have as part of our town square, uh, as a give back to the community, we've developed what we call a family center. So we provide support groups as well as educational opportunities and recreational opportunities that are available to the entire community for free. Uh, You don't have to be a member to participate in that. So the one particular support group I had a couple of weeks ago had, it was right before Lori came, we had uh, six women participating, all caring for their husbands. Mm -hmm. And four out of the six were dealing with heavy incontinent issues and struggling with the wet bedding in, in the morning and all the things. And all I could think was when Lori made the presentation, I can't wait to go back the next time they come and tell them about this product. They're going to have to give this a try because they think there's just huge potential for them to live life much more comfortably. And it makes it such an easier job for the caregiver as well. Everybody wants to be able to have more free time and caregiving is just a huge responsibility to begin with. Um, And it's amazing to see the number of people and especially the, our, our male clients are not our male um, caregivers uh, who are spouses of our female members don't necessarily come out for support groups. You know, our our men are fairly strong and they think they can handle it and they're not gonna be the ones to show up. Once in a while, we have a few. So it amazes me when I look around the table and look at these women who are in their 80s and I've had some in some groups that are in their 90s and being the primary caregiver to their spouse and, and the huge responsibility that is for them. There's just never a break. And so when you can get a small break, like not having to do loads of laundry and changing bedding because you've got a better product to use, then I think that's made a huge difference in everybody's life. Well, and I would imagine that, that you hear, because um, I know I hear it a lot from families where you know, we were turned down because they do have some, some incontinence on occasion and they don't deal with it there and to know that you can put somebody in a product and you know depending on how long your drive is you can get them there they can spend time and you can get them back I mean that's huge I mean that opens a whole nother door right there in and of itself it's kind of interesting because we have someone who is um is wanting to become a client and this is someone who's really sitting on the cusp can we really manage it because it's someone who is going to be a transition challenge for us. We're not a medical daycare, we're a social daycare. We do have CNAs and CHHAs on staff to tend to personal care, but there's a limit to what any one of them can do as far as transfers are concerned. And so um, we had someone telling us that her, her husband attends a medical daycare. Now their day is usually shorter, that usually ends by two o'clock in the afternoon. She says he does not need to be changed all day long. And we were just rather in horror of the idea of letting someone sit 
mm -hmm. in, in a wet product uh, for the entire day. Um, but the idea of what Seni seems to be able to offer, and again, we're anxious to see this happen, is that somebody could potentially come and maybe be there for a whole eight days and we don't have to worry about that transfer. That might make the difference on whether or not he can come to town square. Mm -hmm. And that was that was a big that was a big deal. Yeah, um, very much so. Um, Deanna, you know, I, have you worked with very many adult day centers? Yeah, we do work with some. Um, you know, it's interesting that there are so many channels and avenues to be able to go down to help people. But um, we work with um, uh, one here in Orlando that has four or five different centers. And interestingly enough, uh, the adult day center orders the products, the Seni products for their members and the products are shipped to their house um, with the uh, thinking that, you know, if they are sleeping through the night in a good quality product, number one, if they're sleeping through the night, they don't get up, they don't get up, they don't fall, they don't end up at the ER, then they're more alert, more engaged. And it all goes back to full circle. Now they're coming to the daycare center, more alert, more engaged, um, better for the caregivers to Linda's point of um, less need to be changed. Uh, so it, it all comes uh, full circle. So we are definitely uh, working with more and more daycare centers. Our continence care program, similar to the home care model, works extremely well in the adult daycare model uh, or adult enrichment centers. I know some of the terminology changes, but at the end of the day, it, it just, again, is, is full circle um, because if you go all day, whether you're staying at your, your home and you're, you're happy and you're doing things and then, or if you're at uh, an adult day program and you're staying happy, it does no one any good to have during the night the leaks, the wetness, the uncomfortableness, the getting up and the negative clinical outcomes that follow that. It doesn't serve anybody well, including that incontinent person. So our goal is to continue to work with the home care agencies, continue to pursue the adult daycare. It's new. It's, it's, it's new. It's novel. It's baby steps all the way. And, and, and again, even when we saw it with home care, that's changing. We've seen it in adult day. We'll make a phone call and they'll say, Oh, we don't do that. <laughs> and, and again, we'll have to backpedal and say, we know we're here to help and just think of. And then to Linda's point, if people come to mind, you'd be amazed how people come to mind over and over. Oh, wait a minute. That might be a scenario. Wait a minute. Now, and now everybody's on the same page and it just is so rewarding for everybody. And, um, and again, if we can keep that person happier enjoying that socialization that, that comes with attending a place like town square or other adult days, that to me is all about improvement of quality of life. Um, it, it just ties right back to that improvement of quality of life um, all day long. So, yeah. Well, and I think it proves a good point too, that when we don't have a solution, we don't really focus on the problem, but when we, when we find a solution, then we want to spread the word you know, that, hey, this, this can help. And, and we identify that problem. It, it comes to the front, I think, a little bit more. It's, it's just easier for everyone to deal with. It's, it kind of reminds me of even the doctors a lot of times aren't telling people they're, they've got a diagnosis of dementia because they don't know what to tell them. And when they have those resources, when they feel more comfortable with that process, you know, the person is informed, but everybody's life is richer because everybody has a, a broader knowledge base. And, uh, and, and I think that that's really important. And that's one of the things that I love about what you're doing, again, is having this comfortable conversation, no one's squirming in their chair, you know, feeling uncomfortable. And, and every time we meet, I, I keep thinking of, well, gosh, that could probably be a really good product. And this is totally off off dementia or, or um, home care and or adult day, but even like chemo, they sit in those chairs forever. And incontinence hits people at all ages and stages of life. And how much easier that would make that process that's a really difficult one be as well. I am so excited to help spread the word on this because I do think it's really important. And 
again, the other thing that I found is with every single guest, you can see the passion in everybody's face, you know, when they, when they're talking, I mean, this isn't a commercial. People could look at this as like, oh, this is just one big commercial for Sunny. And it's like, <laughs> this works. Listen to the stories. Look at the, the differences in the product. And, you know, not everyone who is who's, uh, selling a product or ha- has a solution is passionate behind it. And the passion is there for a reason. And that's because it's really making a difference in, in people's lives. So I, I want to go around to the, the ladies again and see if there's any additional thoughts. So Robin, any thoughts that you have, that anything that we didn't cover that, that should be mentioned? Um, I just think that it's so wonderful when I'm going into a home just to offer solutions for different things. You know, I may tell them about the local Alzheimer's Center where there's a care support group. And now I can, you know, I'm just there to give solutions and hopefully they'll become a client, but if not, at least I've you know helped out a little bit. So Sunny is a big part of helping out. Wonderful, thank you. Marissa, how about you? So one of the things that crossed my mind as we were talking about this is um, really access to care. One of the things I come across all the time when speaking with clients who need help in the home is um, they, they, they're not sure if they need a companion you know, somebody to just spend time with their loved one, or if they need a home health aide, who is somebody who actually has to do personal hands-on care, right? A companion isn't licensed to do that. So if they need any personal hands-on care, it automatically has to be a home health aide. Post-pandemic, the pool of home health aides has become smaller and smaller and smaller. So um, when a family member says to me, oh no, we, you know, mom's incontinent and we need to change her diaper three or four times during an eight hour shift. So we definitely need a home health aid. I say, okay, yep. If you're going to be providing personal care, that's definitely going to be necessary. But with this product, if those diaper changes don't have to happen as frequently and it's a shorter shift, then it it opens up the pool of available caregivers for this family, which means that 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 primary caregiver, if it's then only four hours, and we know that this product is good for four hours or three hours, that, that is another option. It opens up the pool of caregivers available for that family. And now that caregiver can run to shop right and do food shopping or just go have a cup of coffee or you know provide the respite that whatever that means to that primary caregiver if if it opens up the pool of available caregivers from senior helpers for this family um, so i think it increases access to care good point linda how about you anything that you want to add um, I just thought it was interesting to note um, because I feel the same way that the, the continence issue does not come just with aging and we know that it does. And, and it was interesting you were asking about the town square um, situation and how we manage that. A lot of our members are um, more independent. We have a broad base of membership, some needing support and some are who are highly um, independent and probably use products but we're not aware of it because they can manage it on their own and very discreetly. So it's something that I think that we can certainly put out there and offer to families so that they're aware of it or to the the members themselves. But when you think about it as well, it's not just the aging population. This uh, presentation that Lori did struck me personally in in another way because I have two grandchildren who are profoundly disabled and medically fragile. And their situation is, is that they are receiving inferior products through Medicaid, which is what supports their care. And they are, when they wake up in the morning, they are soaked to the, to the bone and all the bedding and all of their pajamas and everything else. And as well as probably needing a bath and, and, and being cleaned down before they can be dressed again for the day is just an endless cycle of care. And I was, I was struck by the potential that there could be an answer to this, that this could be something that could at least for the nighttime diapers to, to save that laundry and keep them comfortable throughout the night and not cold um, makes a big difference too. So I think it's interesting to, it'll be interesting to see how this, this product can spread uh, across a wide range of age groups and needs. Well, and 
for Medicare to take into all the cost savings. So it's not just the bottom line of this, but it's the bottom line of everything, you know, that's being supported. And I know in, in other shows, we've talked about the supplemental products and stuff with lotions and creams and, and different things too. This isn't, this isn't just continence pad or brief or whatever. I, you know, I'm not even sure what, what good term there is because everybody uses so many different things out there. Lori, is there, is there a a term that you like to use that, uh, you know, we should, we should all be using these days. I know uh, a lot of us do call it diapers. And and again, it's kind of like adult day. We don't, we don't want to go to adult day. We don't need that but it's common. And that's kind of the verbiage that's, that's out there. So what should we be using? What should we be saying? Well, uh, so I was taught that uh, brief is appropriate and brief is the tab with the tabs. So think of the brief as the baby diapers, except correct. We do not use the word diaper anymore in this scenario. Um, But that is the one with the tab. So we would call that the brief. The other one would be the pull up slash underwear. It could be termed either way is appropriate. Um, And the way I remember that one is underwear, you have to pull up, you know, over your legs. So that's, that's the way I kind of, that clicked with me. (laughs) Okay. Well, good. Given this is our, our, our fourth part of our series, any other thoughts that you want to share, you know, with our audience, Lori? I just, you know, I appreciate all you ladies on here and you, Lori, especially for hosting all of these. Um, I just, you know, I, I really love, um, I love that uh, we're all, like you said, passionate about helping seniors, helping. It doesn't, it, they don't have to be seniors. They could be people in their 40s, their 30s. It doesn't matter. Um, to, to Linda's story, you know, her grandchildren suffer from, having to go on these inferior products because they're being paid for. And that happens in many, many cases. And it's such a shame. Um, So the the education I think is very, very important when it comes to this topic Uh, and especially getting that word out there that there is something better. There's, you know, there's something that could potentially take away the use of the underpads. I mean, we have, you know, we work with communities that they no longer buy the underpads. They don't need them. Uh, people are sleeping through the night peacefully, staying dry in our products. Um, that's huge. You know, when you talked about this, the cost savings, um, factor in also the gloves. Every time a caregiver changes somebody, uh, it, and it could be six to nine, 10 times a day versus Seni, which is more like three to four times a day. Well, they're using gloves with every change. They're using washcloths with every change. Um, that those add up, you know. It's uh, again the ripple effect um, of our products. That's just what I love to talk about, and I love, you know, everybody's coming to me all the time with more and more testimonials that they tried it on their loved one first before they presented it to maybe their executive director at their assisted living building or or their skilled nursing, you know, administrator. Um, and that's, that's really the fun part of my job is hearing all those testimonials, just coming from my friends, my colleagues, trying it out on their relatives, and then they bring it into our world, which is, you know, we deal with all seniors, healthcare, all of it. So it's, uh, it's getting, it's getting more and more buzz. Yeah, well, in, in healthcare, I, this is my, my eyes looking in, but it, to me, healthcare is one that hasn't been uh, excited to change. I mean, I hear a lot of times we've always done it this way, you know, which is a phrase that drives me crazy. And that's one of the reasons, you know, I, I love to see this program. I love to see Linda, what you're doing, you know, with the town square um, senior helpers in terms of, you know, just let's be a resource. Let's, let's test this out and, and see what's, see what's working. Um, Deanna, how about you? Final words for, for our audience? Well, uh, a big thank, uh, thank you, uh, Lori LeBay, for everything that you've done for the, the platform that's allowed us to keep spreading awareness. Um, I'm very grateful for Linda, Marissa, Robin. I mean, it goes on and on with all the other guests. Um, and just to Lori's point, it's so important, so critical to look at overall value versus cost would be a big 
thing, three to four changes per day with SENI products, but overall value versus cost is huge. And then a person-centered approach, not every product, a medium is a medium is a medium, brand to brand, when people are looking at all many choices out there. So sizing comes into play. So more education is needed. I think all of us serve as resources to provide that education. But um, if there are any silver linings with the pandemic, a bright light has been shined on the importance of individualized needs that people should be entitled to and are entitled to. And that goes beyond incontinence. It goes in, in all the, the scope of healthcare. So I think person-centered approach to care, look at value and just know that um, I find that there are more um, good resourceful people in the world uh, than there are not, which is a really cool thing. And so if you look for the good, you look for the resource, we're all out here um, wanting to help. It's just um, navigate your way to, to find the resources because it's out. And, and certainly I know the folks on the call, I can speak for them, but we're always available to help. I think another part that just triggered me when you were talking was, you know, this has kind of been a taboo topic. Nobody likes to talk about this publicly. And it, it's kind of like dementia. If we're not going to talk about the needs, we're never going to get the resources. That's mm -hmm. just the bottom line. So we, we have to bring this up. And you're going to be shocked at what you find out there for resources and stuff. So, you know, even once you try it and have success with it, don't keep it to yourself, you know, share it because there's other people like you that need to know. And word of mouth, I, I don't care what Google says, word of mouth is still our best advertiser out there by far, because uh, Google doesn't have the passion that people do behind the message. And that gives you an authentic real testimonial. And, and I don't think anything can beat that. So very um, helpful, again, scenario that we had today. Deanna, as far as people reaching out to Seni, what would you like to give them for contact information? Yeah, if we could uh, give them our website, uh, that would be wonderful. www.seni-usa.com. Uh, and then my email address is Deanna, D-E-A-N-N-A -N -N -A dot Vigliotta, V as in Victor, I-G-L-I-O-T-T-A at T-Z-M-O-U-S-A dot com. That would be fabulous and helpful and happy to help. Okay, wonderful. And Marissa, what would you like people to have for contact information for you if Sure. Um, they could reach us through our website, which is www.seniorhelpers.org, I believe. Um, or they could also email me, which is mbizerna, B, that's M-B-I-S-E-R-N-A at seniorhelpers.com. Wonderful. And then Linda, how about you? Sure. You can reach me by email at L Panarella, and that's P as in Peter, A-N-A-R-E-L-L-A -L -L -A, at townsquare.net. Or you can find out more about Town Square on um, townsquare.net forward slash Jersey Shore. Wonderful. Great. And Robin, how about you? Um, you can find us seniorhelpers.com. Um, if you're in the Orlando area, you would add a slash Orlando to that. And also facebook.com slash Senior Helpers Orlando. So wonderful. And Lori, I know that you're connected with, with Deanna in terms of, of contact information. Again, thank you so much for your time. And Linda, we're going to have to have you on later on regarding uh, your program and learn a little bit more on that as well. And then we'll hear a little bit more on, on how Seni products are doing at that time as, as well too. I okay. would love to do that anytime, Lori. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Again, to our listeners, please like, click, and share. This is a really important topic. And if you can help someone else get over the hurdle of incontinence, incontinence issues, I mean, you're changing their lives. So, you know, don't be shy. <laughs> this is not a time to be shy. <laughs> um, let them know this product exists and and you know where they can find resources both through SENI and through Senior Helpers and Town Square. Till next time. Bye, everyone. <laughs>